Welcome, it's Sinom. You're watching This Week in Crypto, a show where we talk about Bitcoin, Ethereum and altcoins. We're going to take a look at the fundamentals of this bull run, where we are headed next. We're going to take a look at the biggest news that happened in the past week, as well as I will give some altcoin predictions at the end of the video as well. So stick around for that. So for this week's video, let's just start with the Bitcoin price, because this is what I think the Bitcoin will be doing in the next few weeks. So by the second week of February, I do think that we will be headed for the all-time highs. It could happen much faster than that, and I will explain soon why I think that also. But this is basically my worst case scenario here. And what it means is that we almost for the next week, we will, will, we will still be consolidating at these levels and then we will see a move to the upside. We may hover a little bit uh, nearby the all-time high and then we just uh, break through it as well. Because that is exactly what we did here uh, out there at, at near 20,000 as well. So we were in this uh, triangle formation, then we broke to the downside and then we had another test to the downside and basically had a double uh, bottom formation here and then we had this massive run to the upside as well. So if we just basically complete the same thing, we fell down from the triangle here and we came and retested the $29,000 level, which by the way, in the last week's video, I told you guys that 29000 is one of my price targets and I had a purchase here for Bitcoin, which hopefully was a good purchase. It may still come to 26,000 and 21,000. So I have more purchases there if we see that low numbers again, but I don't really uh, believe in that. Maybe 26,000 is something we can still see. But from there, I do believe we're headed for the new highs. Why? Because the on-chain anal analytics are looking really, really good, as well as the whales are just accumulating a lot of Bitcoin right now. So if we take a look at uh, the SOPR index, which is basically just uh, showing us how many people are willing to sell at a loss. This actually hit number one here. And this is critical. Why? Because if you take a look at the 2017 bull run, every time the SOP, SOPR index hit one, we had a really nice move to the upside as well. So this happened every single time this hit one here. So during bull runs, when SOPR hits one, that's a critical buying signal in my opinion. So. After it did that, then it started to recover. So that's why I think that we could even recover faster than this one. But if we consolidate here, it would be really good for altcoins. If you just want to be safe, you may want to convert some of the altcoin profits back into Bitcoin right now, because the people who are selling right now are people, uh, are retail people who didn't get, uh, who already lost hope with their Bitcoin investments because it dropped from 40,000 to 30,000. And we have people who are selling their Bitcoin to buy altcoins right now. So the money is now moving to altcoins, but soon when the money is coming back into Bitcoin, you don't want to be the last one with the altcoin when they start to dump. So for that reason, I highly suggest at least uh, consider <laughs> consider uh, converting some of the altcoin profits back into Bitcoin because I do think that this is now gathering a lot of strength as well. Institutions are buying and we have we are seeing massive amounts of whale buying as well. I will show that really, really soon as well. But some good news from the United States. Janet Yellen, who is now the Secretary of Treasury in the United States, has now positive promises of uh, effective crypto regula regulation. So she um, clarified her stance on crypto regulation. So she was a little bit harsh on the video maybe for some people, but here she is making it a little bit softer. So basically she's saying that uh, Bitcoin and other digital cryptocurrencies have good potential and may help uh, building the efficiency of the financial system as well. But they see fears that they may be used for bad purposes that are not for the best uh, interest for America. For example, the Central Bank of China was uh, mentioned here as well, and they can be used for terrorist financing and money laundering and so forth. So what she wants to do is encourage people to use legitimate activities with cryptocurrencies and to curtail malign and illegal activities. So all in all, she wants to have effective regulatory framework for these and other fintech innovations. So I think this is all overall pretty bullish. So we will probably not see any kind of banning happening. We will just see maybe a little bit more regulation. And uh, all in all, it seems like she wants to have more support and not uh, basically be left in the in the dust when other uh, parties like China are, are already accelerating with, accelerating with full speed. Also, if you take a look, look at the new 
secret uh, SEC chief Gary Gensler. He is actually was a previous, I don't know if he was a professor, but he was actually teaching about cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin and blockchain at MIT. So this guy has been talking about Bitcoin for the longest time, Gary Gensler. So I do think that overall the United States are much more positive towards cryptocurrencies nowadays as uh, Biden is now the president. Next, uh, Bitcoin whales are growing. So this is a very, very interesting chart here. So I told you guys that whales are now accumulating Bitcoin like never before. So these are the number of addresses with more than 1000 Bitcoin and these numbers are just growing. So as the sellers, sell off has been happening, people are just accumulating more Bitcoin. So now there are almost 2450 wallets in existence that have more than 1000 Bitcoin. So if you are selling your Bitcoin, you are selling it to whales, you are selling it to uh, exchanges as well. So eventually I do think that the Bitcoin price will recover because as we have already seen that whales are willing to accumulate as well as institutions are willing to accumulate at these prices. So who is really selling? It's just the traders, uh, altcoin people and retail people basically who are selling. So for that reason, I do uh, have a very strong co conviction that uh, Bitcoin will bounce back quite hard and some of the altcoins that had really really nice uh, runs for the last week uh, sorry you, you can see that some of the altcoins had like a 50% pump for the last week and even higher Enol which I covered in last week's video made a really nice 100% gain here as well so all in all pretty nice moves for some of the altcoins but I would start con con uh, considering putting some of the altcoin gains back into Bitcoin as well because when the uh, capital starts flying back to Bitcoin then the altcoins will dump as well so Bitcoin will just outperform everything once again. So for that reason I don't know when that will happen maybe it will happen during a week maybe it will happen faster we don't know but all in all it just looks to me like all the signals show that the uh, Bitcoin will start recovering quite soon as well. Uh, next, some big updates that happened. Kyber Network, which is one of the leading DeFi protocols in the in the whole market, they were leading basically the uh, DeFi charge before Uniswap even happened. So they are actually releasing Kyber 3.0, and they are creating something called a DMM, a Dynamic Market Maker. So Uniswap is an automated market maker. Dynamic Market Maker basically just helps people. Uh, with uh, impermanent loss as well as some of the gas fees and some of the fee distribution. So during high volatility, high volume, there will be higher fees. During low volume, there will be lower fees. So this all in all sh should help uh, both with assets that have a lot of liquidity but and don't want to have a lot of slippage and it will also help with projects that have low liquidity with the slippage as well. So all in all quite interesting uh, stuff here. This is a massive read. So if you want to read whole thing here, they just want to basically give more utility for KNC. So you have more fee sources. They will help with the gas fees somehow. But there's no mention of layer twos here, except at the end. So this architecture that uh, they will be rolling out throughout the 2021 will also make it easier for Kyber to use potential uh, scaling solutions like layer two solutions. So for now, Kyber Network is not scaling with layer twos. They were just making it a little bit more efficient and so forth. So it was quite interesting, but I don't see this as groundbreaking because of the gas fees are still going to be high because they are not uh, planning to do a layer two here. So I was a little bit let down from here. But anyway, all in all, the DMM Dynamic Market Maker is a huge improvement compared to the AMM. So that could be nice. So I'm definitely keeping an eye out for this when they do release the DMM and how much money it will gather as well. Next, next let's talk about some of the altcoins. So if you just divide it, uh, look at the seven day moves here and we go all the way down here, we can find a, a couple of interesting picks for this week. I do think TrustWap, after it has uh, experienced a minus 20%, this seems quite good because this price was almost at one dollar not too long ago so uh, a correction of 35 percent i think this could be a decent pick if you haven't had any trust swap yet as well as the staking for trust swap is now starting to be full i think it's like 60 70 
100% full I don't exactly know but anyway when it's full it's full and no one else can get in anymore so if you want to participate in the pre-sales this could be an interesting pick right here Cosmos I do think it's a solid project it's a blockchain of blockchains basically so many protocols out there like the Binance coin as well as band coin are actually built on the Cosmos SDK so this coin could be an interesting one as well as ADA because ETH has been pumping so hard it also broke another all-time high I think ADA will be pumping or can pump soon as well uh, was there something else here mm -hmm. Matic could be one but basically those are those are the uh, one of the top ones here as well and uh, of course as I always talk about uh, this one coin that I have been watching for a long time and that's actually Celsius cell token and I have been tweeting about this a lot uh, when it was four point five dollars uh, four dollars let's actually pull that up so cell token even though it already pumped 13 percent I think it was massively undervalued and I do think this has a lot of upside uh, in the uh, basically this year uh, it already recovered from the four dollar mark here and went to the five dollars back to five dollars but I still think it's quite undervalued so if we take a look at the stats here you can see the do total total uh, daily depositors so basically how many people have actually deposited funds on the Celsius application so if we t just take a look at from January 1st they had 100,000 depositors and January 26th they have 124 thousand almost depositors so that's a 25 percent increase in a month so if they actually continue having 25 percent increase per month for the whole 2021 this means that total depositors will actually reach more than 1 million depositors at the end of 2021 so that could probably mean a 10x in price as well if that happens if they can only just keep up the same static pace and not go parabolic with the total depositors if they can get 25,000 new depositors every single month for the whole 2021, that still means that they will have uh, 350, 350, 100, 350, 100,000 uh, depositors at the end of at the end of 2021 as well. So for me, I think the price of sell can at least 5x from here. So $25 is basically what I'm eyeing at for 2021 for sell token. So for that reason, while this has been happening, the price has actually been going down a little bit here. So on the logarithmic chart, if you take a look at sell USD, I do think it's looking really solid as well. So let's take a look at this one. This is basically the chart that I'm looking at. And we had a really nice bounce from this long-term trend line here uh, as well on the sell token. So this has sell has basically outperformed both Ethereum and Bitcoin for 2020. And for me, the tokenomics are still super good. And in quarter three or uh, quarter four of 2021, they will also release the Visa card. That's basically the plan there. Maybe they will not release it. We'll see. But that's the ultimate plan they have as well. So all in all, I think this token has really good potential. I've already talked about it many, many times, but I just have to showcase that I do think it has a lot of potential and just how much uh, depositors they have, as well as how much actual net deposits they have. Uh, it's looking solid in my opinion. Next token I want to talk about is actually, uh, let's take a look at the DeFi Pulse here. So if you go to DeFiPulse.com and click DEXs, you can see how much value locked in each protocol here. You can see Uniswap, they have $3 billion. SushiSwap, they have $2 billion. But Balancer has $900 million uh, worth of assets uh, locked in their uh, system. But the market cap for these protocols is... Uh, something that shows up uh, potential as well so uh, let me go back here coins let's search balancer so balancer total market cap is only 270 million dollars compared that to the value locked which is almost 900 million dollars so i do think balancer can actually have a really really nice upwards as well as when i was looking at the balancer like what do i think of balancer and uh, something I saw their tweet that they actually will also reimburse gas fees. So if you have been watching my videos about uh, how you can save money on the gas fees, if you implement this, that you will start using 
balancer exchange for gas fees. They will have a pilot here starting today on man Monday, January 25th for four weeks that they will give 7,500 balancer back to people who swap on their protocol. So if you swap on balancer, you will get a cash gas fee cash back as well. So this you can do it on top of the previous videos. But it would it was this was just another thing that I saw. But anyway, I do think that balancer token could have a really good potential because the market cap compared to the value locked is so small with balancer token as well. So here are basically some of uh, altcoin picks, some ideas for you to consider for this week. And uh, thanks for watching. Let me know if I missed something for this week's video. Let me know what you thought about this video. And uh, as always, I will see you on the next video as well.